Outstanding. Awesome. a fat face I swear to god I'm not overweight but as someone who's French a lot of weight goes into my face oh day one I guess it's uh it's been showering I mean it's the mountains you almost can't sleep out here without having at least one rain some rain hit your tent uh, stop for the moment I should jump out and see if I can't get some breakfast in me before the next one hits. Uh, it's just too nice in this bag. Well, things are better out here than I thought they'd be. The sun comes out periodically. Sometimes there's blue sky. Maybe this is what I'll have all day. Maybe it won't shower on me continuously. That'd be nice. Got this thing out to try and dry it a bit, but... Unless you can hang it up in the sun for a few hours, I think you're kind of boned. My big pile of food over there. <laughs> yeah, just uh, trying to get my morning taken care of. Well, got my coffee. Hanging out beside this uh, South Boundary Trail sign. This is actually on the other side of this thing. This part here is all, uh, with all the plues and trail restrictions and stuff like that here's to the side of the here's to the start of the south boundary trail this is incredibly daunting today is going to be by far the heaviest weight day i have after uh you know, when I get to Medicine Tent, tomorrow I'm planning to string up a bunch of food and head north and go explore north on the South Boundary Trail. So the next time I throw on that pack is going to be 11 days of food, not 15. But today is 15, and I'm going over pass. I don't think it's a hard pass, but it's a pass. And mosquitoes are all over the place. The side effect of mosquitoes is you don't stop for breaks as much as you should right? Because as soon as you stop, they're all over you. And it's pretty difficult to rest when you're constantly swatting. And I'm going to put on bug spray, just something I don't do a whole lot. And hopefully that'll encourage me to just kind of lie down every so often. Because I got lots of time. It's only 11 kilometers. That's it. But this is one heavy ass pack. This is a 55 pound pack. At least I think it is. I honestly didn't weigh it, but last year it was 53 with two liters of water and 13 days of food. Today I'm running with one liter of water to try and cut down the weight a bit, and I have 15 days of food. So, yeah, we're probably talking about 55. Doesn't look like I left anything behind. Oh my god. Okay. Here goes nothing. Nothing at all. Oh. One step at a time. <laughs> well, that's quite nice. I think I hear something coming. I'm sharing this trail with uh, quads and dirt bikes and stuff, so. But that's only for the first few kilometers, and then I'm off to the pass and off to Jasper National Park where they're not allowed. Yeah, five of them. Five quads. A couple of side-by-sides. I stopped and chit-chatting me for a second there. Most people you meet are nice. The only thing is that all you ever find is uh, remains from crappy people, right? Garbage and stuff.
stuff like that. So, you know, people, people get to have their fun on quads too. It's their thing, right? First break at 900 meters. That's actually more than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like five. I got to let my body get used to this, right? I'm a bl big believer in that anyway. Like even with a 35 pound pack, I will stop and take a break at the one kilometer mark and just let your body kind of catch up. It's like, oh crap, you know, you've sent all the signals to it. Yeah, we're going to be working today. Your legs, your back, everything. Just now let it catch up to you. And usually after two or three breaks, your body's like, okay, yeah, I'm with this. I got you. So yeah, but who knows with a 55 pound pack and all day, Breaks, breaks, breaks. Why not? By the way, 182.7 and a day hike on top of that. That's what I got a backpack. So it's kind of approximated, but yeah. One kilometer down, 181.7 left. Well, actually a tiny bit hesitant to lose this quad trail because you do get kind of a view but I'm already uh where the horse trail initially breaks off apparently it just parallels for a while so you can uh you know I think there's three or four places you can get on this thing I'm happy to get away from the puddles but you can already see that I'm going to be crawling over a tree in like 20 meters so could be crawling over three trees now but I expect that the entire trail I step into the forest to pee and uh, look what's hiding in here. What is this for? Never seen one like that. Huh. The things you find. All right. First meadow, first view. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Yeah. You hear that? There's some kind of pissed off bird over here. Let's see what it becomes here in the this meadow. This is why you wear your rain pants after a night of rain, even if it's not raining now. This is when I love these shoes too, because I sunk in over there. And something like this. Hey there! Woo! All right, they love to dig and yeah. Anyway, I'm not sure if you stay on the road if it'll be better or not, but anyway, this is what you got to deal with. You get on the horse trail. Well, that uh, boggy section probably lasted 100 meters, 150 meters. It was not a whole lot of fun. That's when you're happy to have the big boots, even though they're a lot of weight on your feet. Don Beer's book actually says to go farther and then once you get to this meadow, another 100 meters and then cut over here and intercept this. Now that's from 1996, so I didn't trust it, but you know what? It appears to be right. If you could uh, skip that boggy section by going on the road, which I assume is about over here-ish right now, then uh, that's not too bad. The road, uh, seismic line, quad road, whatever. I think it goes down here and turns right, goes down there a ways. Whereas I'm going straight on Ro Rocky Pass. It has started to sprinkle and rain on me a bit. It's actually slowing down a little. This is the only day I want nice weather because I mean, having a pack that's wet probably adds another two pounds. So I actually have this this year. The prognosis I'm getting off of like YouTube and stuff is that these help, but they're not worth the weight. Well, I'm going to try it this year. It would be nice to not have, you know, to have a pack that's not completely drenched. Maybe it's a little damp, you know, and then in turn, some of the stuff inside. Maybe not all of it is completely wet, right? You know, aside from the stuff that you have in dry sacks and that. Ridiculous. So I uh, bring whey powder. All right, I put in my water. I had a false start to this. This is actually my third start. I had two false starts. The second one was a few days ago. 
and I made this up and I got it all ready. It was gonna be my first day, my first day uh, whey powder. It's like gone bad. It tastes all weird and funny. How does whey powder go bad? Like, so now I feel like I need to dump it out. I can't risk food poisoning out in the middle of nowhere. I already drank a little bit of it, but Jesus. Whey powder goes bad. If you, if you put it in, you drink it right away. Otherwise it goes bad. Who the hell knew? Well, it's a big trail coming in from the road. Who knows, maybe that's the best way to go. And now this, it's not just a horse trail, this has gotten a lot wider. So, anyway. Well, now I understand why that road comes in. An old outfitter camp is here, except it's still, still being used, that's for sure. What are these for? I find these at these outfitter camps. It's big pieces of old, you know, sheet metal. What's that good for? Look at all the water that's gathered in these tarps. Like, so much. Oh, oh a little tear there. Here, I'll do them a bit of a favor. I don't get myself. Holy crap, that's a lot of water. That is so much water. Oh, gross. <laughs> yeah. Woo. All right, that's enough. <laughs> There's like five more. I don't think I'm gonna, well, I could do this one. I'll do a few, why not, you know. Anyway, it's, uh, it's quite the little setup I got going. What if the quads come in here if it's just horses? That's kind of cool. Good place for me to sit down, hang out. There's a bunch of nice stumps around. Some old pail. All little pieces of wood for some odd reason. There we go. I got this from over there. I found the smart way finally. I just stuck it in there. Now it's holding it all the water over that hole and it can drain out. Ah, it's the simple pleasures in life. <laughs> well, I followed a trail out the back of that outfitter camp and uh, leading me over to this. Sweet. here oh yeah one thing I like about not being you know a guy who does 20 25 kilometers 30 35 kilometers a day I just chill out I play with the water right I mean yeah explore I see everything I do pretty well with that sort of thing and yeah 11 kilometers and that's how this whole trip is for the much for the most part it is actually even less than the north boundary trail the campgrounds a lot of them are 10 and 11 kilometers apart it's yeah it's all right well i guess you don't have to follow a trail over there this trail immediately comes out to this I'm gonna go down to the cardinal river and i get to cross it three times you guys come out here and have fires. You definitely cannot blame them for that. So beautiful here. There's the trail. You come out onto the rocks and you don't know where to go. Oh, or I'm just blind and there's a big fat cairn right here. Excellent. All right. Now I can see horse trail over there. So clearly this is the first place across. And then I got told to just leave my sandals on because, you know, I have Crocs. But yeah, because the next two crossings come pretty fast. And, uh, I mean, down here is almost nicer than the outfitter camp. because You don't have to come down that massive hill to come get water. 
remember this is still a public land use zone you can camp basically anywhere you like and uh yeah this would be pretty bitchin spot that's for sure well i made myself another whey protein shake clean the living hell out of this thing i wish i could just disinfect it completely but i felt like i bring detergent out here dishwasher soap whatever I just stole, probably stole the last day of whey powder, but that's all right. I want whey powder. I want my whey powder shake on the day when I have 55 pounds on my back and I'm trying to preserve my body as best I can for the next 15 days. You know, the last day, eh, whatever. I'm sure it'll be hard, but I'll have whatever leftover food I have to eat too. All right, there's one crossing done. Wasn't very fast, came up just below the knee. Not too bad. Roll on to the next one. Second crossing. The trail is actually over there, but it's pretty, pretty fast and rapids and stuff. So I kind of came down here where it's still pretty quick, but it's more spread out and definitely not as loud not as many rapids. So, all right, no problem. I got a lot of practice a couple of weeks ago on uh, the ghost. A lot of fast crossings up to my knees and splashing up even higher than that. So no worries, even with a big, big 55 pound pack on my back. Last one, pretty fast and narrow here. I might walk up here and kind of cross there. It spreads out a bit more. Trail right now, just looks like a stream. But a bit of a rock ring too. It's interesting in the public land use zones, you find stuff all over the place. Whereas in the national parks, it's pretty much here's where you can camp and only here. Well, I ended up crossing there after all. Went over here, started edging my way down, and then I discovered that it was actually maybe even a bit more than knee deep right there. It doesn't look like it. And you know, you just don't have any agility with all that weight on your back, so. Decided to come back here. The nice thing about it being so clear is I could see the deep part and I just took a big step over it. So it was fine. Anyway, I'm glad to have my boots back on after almost a kilometer walking in Crocs. And now it's time to climb. Climb, climb, climb up to the pass. Well, the trail is uh, more a stream than a trail for the moment. Oh. Well, you can see that the water has taken a lot of different twists and turns over the years, and now it's down in there. A tiny bit of it's still coming down here. Oh, this is hard. Some kind of old gate fence. I don't see any other... I don't see anything to the left or right, but you can see the nails, right? The nail there, there's a nail in some of those. Oh, oh, well, you break out into that little meadow there, and then this is better. It's not so steep. Still climbing, but yeah, that was murder there, but it didn't last long, thankfully. <sighs> Starting to get above it all. You always got to turn around and take a shot of the pass from the side you just climbed. Sometimes you're not so sure if you're going to get a like a good view of it on the, once you get to the actual pass, the actual top of it. All right, this is pretty sweet. Oh yeah. Trail's getting a little bit covered in, but at least you always have this little trench here. You gotta rush past a whole lot of stuff. You can only see the trail about 10 feet. Woo! And hopefully you don't have easy to rip pants because they'll be torn to shreds coming through all this stuff. Outstanding. Awesome.
very odd trail. The pass, do you think this is the pass? Like this is, this seems like the high point and now you start descending. Well, no, the pass is like another kilometer and something up there. And this is not the highest point of the trail. The pass isn't even, the high point of the trail is a little farther down. What a weird, you know, like it really, it goes down there and then it goes back up higher than this. I guess so. Talk about no fanfare at all for this pass. I think it was kind of that pile of rocks up there. Nothing actually that marks it. Got a, a white sign in here that looks like overgrown or almost like thrown in the bush. Oh, there's a survey marker. Another yellow, yellow one up there, I'm not sure why. Legal survey marker, well that doesn't say much. Come on. Oh, firearm restriction. Yeah. Old. Old one. Well, okay then. I guess Rocky Pass it is. Well, I'm forced to suit up. At least the rain left me alone for quite a while there. The first time I suited up, it went away pretty quick, but that valley does not look good. Oh well. At least I got uh, a lot of the hard stuff done. Oh, look at that. Only one option, and that's just to get down, get elevation, you know. I'm glad I have a trail, so even if I get down there and I can't see very far, I'm just gonna follow a trail, all right? Look at this coming in here. Yeah. Well, you know you're gonna deal with the rain out here every so often. She gotten a little better in the last like 20 seconds. Instead of following this thing, which is what you would think it would do, which looks like it'd be honestly kind of nice, this thing climbs up here, right? Pretty high. So this is actually higher than the pass, apparently. You can see I'm now pretty much hiking in cloud. But yeah, I think I'm here and I think it's about to just, you know, I think this is the valley and it's about to plummet. So, Wow, as long as it doesn't get that much worse than this. All right, I just need to see the trail. It stopped raining, so that's the plus. Well, I wasn't at the high point, I was close. There's some cairns and stuff that kind of show you. Right at the top of the forest, and then you get into this. I'm glad to be in here, you know, it's uh, you never know if rain is gonna be, half hour later is gonna be thunder and lightning. You don't wanna be, having that happen while you're in the pass. So now I'm into the trees, much better. I feel better. Well, I'm starting to see Pine Beetle National Park. I feel like a pointless up and down. So I'm gonna go over here somewhere. I'm gonna go all the way down there into that thing. And then there's the trail. <laughs> pointless down and up, just work. Ugh. Oh well. <laughs> you can see this canyon and stuff here. It's obvious why the trail has to be up here, right? It's probably fairly untraversable. Well, you know what? Pointless up and down has a really cool feature at the bottom of it. Not bad, man. Not bad at all. Cool. I think this is pretty much a first. So the outfitters come out here. I think they use this route. And that trail coming up the rocks, probably in order to make it safe for the horses, they have to take this, go down and do a little bit of trail work. So they've just left her here hanging in a tree. At least that's my educated guess anyway. All right, awesome. 
Oddly enough, Shock Lake is my first solo backpack. I got back into this. And uh, so technically the first 12 kilometers uh, of the South Boundary Trail is the first thing I did. But that's the old South Boundary Trail. Shock Lake, Rocky Pass, South Boundary, Rocky Pass. And there's a trail camera. Oh, I'll go give a little wave. Hey guys. Yeah, there are still people out here. Okay, we gotta head down here a little ways to get to a uh, medicine tent. Love old signs instead of just the brown ones. All right, let's go check this out. I love it. Obviously it gets used. These two massive rocks as seats. I've never seen that before. Nice. This is a medicine tent. Well, 2020, the bear hang's still here, and I'm very happy to see that because I'm planning to leave my food here for a little, a few days. Okay, another little eating area. Bunch of poles and tent pegs. Yeah, left behind. What's that about? By mistake, I'm guessing. Yeah. A bit of garbage, of course. Huh. Well, you don't have to go far to find this log. There's the eating, that second eating area just over there. And this log is. Ew, it looks like it wants to go soon. My goodness. That's all right. It's pretty easy to find something without the damn log. I can tell you that much. The most common thing for left out stuff, left behind stuff, is when it's been left out to dry somewhere. Somewhere random. Exhibit number one. Oh boy. Do you any idea how much Saks underwear costs? It's like... If you can find it on sale, it's like 28 bucks for a pair. It's more like 33 or 34 most of the time. Saks underwear is not cheap. So yeah, <laughs> and for some reason they had the bathing suit. I mean, who would want to go swim in that raging river, my God. Oh man, must have been, must have hurt when they figured out this was gone. I don't know how many primitive sites you've seen, but there's no assigned spots. You just kind of figure things out. Often you're not very far from the eating area, obviously. But that's as far, honestly, that's as far away as I can get from the water. Because I don't like the constant drone of water, so I don't sleep as well with it. But that's the best I could do. So yeah, there's the bear hang. And there's it's just the way things are out here, right? No assigned spots. You just kind of figure things out. They have... You know, they will usually like give four. Sometimes you show up at a site and there's enough spots for 20 tents and sometimes you could barely get four on one, right? Anyhow, I mean, the next three days, I want to head north and explore up there on the South Boundary Trails. So this is my three days of food. I've got, uh, I'm gonna leave my dry sack here, hung up. Now I screwed up. Uh, I didn't think about the fact that without this dry sack, uh, my three days that I don't have, I have very little waterproofing. Like normally my clothes, my puffy, my, you know, a bunch of stuff goes in there inside my bag in case everything gets wet from the rain. So from my food, I managed to scrounge up some of these. You know, normally these are for double bagging my food. So my food has its own little bag, you know, uh, and like whatever and then that's just in case they burst open so I put I stripped a whole bunch of them put them in there they're just gonna be sitting there anyway for this three-day little excursion and now I'll put like some of my clothes and stuff in these and at least then there's some waterproofing right if the pack gets totally wet maybe they'll stay a little bit dry my, uh, my sleeping bag is already has its own 
dry sack and I'll try to stuff my puffy in there best I can. That's typical, right? So I, yeah, I have that little screw up. Just gotta use a little ingenuity, like what can I use for waterproofing? Well, Ziploc bags are not fantastic, but they do provide something. So maybe if the worst happens, if I get rained on, like dumped, like buckets and my pack is totally soaked, maybe my clothes will stay a little dry. Anyway, I got a better shot. Even got a little note here for anyone who comes across my food. So just saying hello, I'm exploring, I'll be back on this date. Yeah, leave a little pen, you know, hopefully uh, maybe someone will write me a note back. I've got another one all written up for uh, when I go, when I'm at uh, Isaac Creek and I go off a little side trip there. Two things about this trip. One, I might not see anyone for two weeks. The first time I think there's like a 90% chance I'm gonna see someone is on the night of my 14th day, my 14th night, uh, walking into Brazo River, that's the Brazo Loop. I expect there's gonna be people there. It's like a 90% chance. Other than that, it could be two weeks almost before I see another human. It's been one day so far. That is insane. All right, second thing. When I put out a YouTube video now, this thing, I'm sure you noticed that I put day one and nothing else. I am not spoiling things for you guys anymore. I am not putting day one of 16, day one of 13, whatever happens. You will just have to wait and see because that's the boat I'm in, right? I don't know what the frick's gonna happen. I have a plan and you know, I'll try to execute it, but it uh, puts you a little bit more into it, right? Because that's my state of being. I accomplished day one. Fantastic. Right? Yesterday I accomplished day zero. Managed to get my car all the way around and stuff. But now it's another 15 days. Moving forward. I just noticed this just beside here. It's a fish hook. That's a new one. I have never found an old fish hook. Actually it looks like it's from this year. Huh. Cool. I might be getting rained on here and there. But, not a rainbow. Oh, it goes across too. Pretty low. Really low. And pretty vibrant too. Not bad at all. So 11 days of food there. I have a your sack bear bag for the rest of it. And then that's what's gonna come with me for my three days. And by the time I get back, all my food will be able to fit in the dry sack. I won't even have to use the bear bag anymore. So yeah, cool. And uh, blue skies have been getting more and more prominence, so maybe tomorrow I'll have a bit better a day. Well, I wandered down the bank. There's supposed to be a horse trail that comes in. It says at Medicine Tent, but obviously it's not anywhere on the mat. But yeah, found another little camp site. Yeah, it's neat to find stuff that most people would miss just because I wander around and check stuff out, right? Well, geez. I'm always, in the tent, I'm always looking down at the camera, so. Oh God, bullfrog, frog. That was a successful first day. I mean, 55, you know, I, don't know, I think I've said that 20 damn times today. Lots of weight on my back. Uh, you know, the bugs were after me this morning, big deal. The rain came in on me, big deal. I went over a pass, whatever. That's what I needed, right? You need that, you know, just get out there and do a day and get some confidence and kind of get your motor running. Like the North Boundary Trail, the first day I was off and, you know, hit the ground running, right? I got my car to where it needed to be and then I ran out there and I did 14 kilometers and I had to do it in kind of a hurry, but, and then I just barely had time to do everything at camp. But 
Still, I don't have time to think. First day, okay, bang, 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 got my first day out of the way. First day backpacking, cars in place. Off you go. But uh, yeah, this one I had to kind of wait a little bit to get that first day of, uh, I'm out on the trail now, all right? Yeah, good night. Tomorrow off to Rocky Forks.